Hi, this photo came up on my Instagram feed a couple months ago from a designer named Tim Hosko. It's a cool Photoshop text effect that's entirely procedural. Someone in the comments asked how to do this in After Effects, and although I gave a written reply, let's do this properly. The example I'm gonna be making is shown on screen now. We're gonna make a title animation. The first step is to make the composition. The resolution and frame rate are up to you and your project, but for this, I went with 4K and 25 frames per second. Also, I'm working in 16 bits per channel, which will help later with cleaner gradients. This isn't necessary, but if you wanna try it out, hold down Alt or Option and press this button to cycle through to 16. Next step is to make our text layer. Really, any font should work, and we can always change this later, but to keep it similar to our reference, I'm using Zoomy Cut, which is a great bold display font you can get in Adobe Fonts with your Creative Cloud subscription. Again though, use whatever you like. With that said, let's start making our blur map. Make a new shape layer and double click on the ellipse tool. If you don't see it here, click and hold this button, select it from the dropdown, and then double click. Set the fill color to black and either disable the stroke or just set the value to zero. Let's also rename the layer so we know what it is. Toggle down into the shape layer and set the size to zero, then slide up from there. This is a really quick way to make a default ellipse into a circle. Exact numbers are dependent on your comp, so I'm just gonna go with something about this size. Next, add a fast box blur and turn off the repeat edge pixels checkbox and increase the amount quite a bit. Just like the size of the circle, this blur can always be changed later. Finally, for this layer, add a solid composite and leave it white. Bring it to the bottom of the stack and toggle it off with the eyeball icon. We're now gonna use our blur map to drive our procedural blur. Make a new adjustment layer and name it blur and displacement. We'll come back to the displacement later. For now, let's add the camera lens blur effect. Change the shape to something a bit more round and also increase the roundness to 100%. Under blur map, change it to, you guessed it, our blur map layer and make sure effects and masks is selected. Increase the blur amount to whatever you like and also deselect repeat edge pixels. Next, let's add some color to this. Make a new adjustment layer and name it color and grain. Add a solid composite to this layer and set it to black. You might be wondering why I didn't just make a black solid and put it below the blur layer. That's because when combined with our color effect in a moment, it looks better blurred over transparency first with a background added after using solid composite. Anyway, for the color, we're gonna be using an effect called Colorama. I actually have a whole video dedicated to this effect, which also includes a download for a pack with my own personal presets. We're gonna be using one of those presets, but feel free to make your own. And although I'll be using a different color scheme than Tim's original example, I went ahead and added his color palette as a preset in that pack as well. Pull up the presets and select Vintage Flames or any that you like. I'm going to tweak the darkest color slightly, but again, this is all personal preference. Finally, for the grain, add a noise alpha effect and put it at the top. This is applied before the solid composite when there's still transparency. I set it to squared random, 75%, and change this drop down to edges. We now have a nice blurred and grainy colorful text effect. Let's add in a bit of animation to our scene. On our blur map, hit S for scale and set it to zero. At a keyframe, move forward about a second or two and increase the amount to whatever you like. For simplicity, I'm just going with 100% because I like the size from before. Then about a second after that, add another keyframe that scales the circle just to the edges of the text. Let's also ease these. Select all the keyframes and hit F9 to easy ease or right click, keyframe assistant, easy ease. Then with the keyframe selected, go to the graph editor and make sure the speed graph is showing with this button. I'm gonna make each keyframe ease in and out with a snappy motion like so, but the extra bit of finesse we're gonna add is by making our middle keyframe pass through with some velocity. Select the keyframe, hold down Alt or Option, and drag up on one of the handles. Experiment with the amount of velocity you want the keyframe to maintain, but I'm good with this. Also, I have a whole video about pass through keyframes and keyframe velocity, so I'll leave a link in the description if you wanna check that out after. Now when we play through, we have a pretty nice curtain opening reveal of the text. Speaking of which, let's do some simple text animation. Because of our setup, this doesn't require anything fancy. We've kind of already done that part. Solo the text layer. Usually to split up any text into its individual words, I use a plugin called Text Exploder. But to keep this without any add-ons, the simple way is to duplicate your text to the amount of words you have, and then just use the rectangular mask tool to draw a single mask on each layer. Then press Y for the anchor point move tool and move the anchor points to the middle of each word. This is important to have a proper scale animation, which we're gonna do now. With all the layers selected, hit S on your keyboard and then press Shift T to also bring up opacity. Add a keyframe for everything and drag those keyframes forward a decent amount. We'll tweak timing in a bit. Then with the playhead still on the first frame, set the scale to something a bit smaller and the opacity to zero. Select all the keyframes, hit F9 to easy ease and open the graph editor. We're gonna keep it simple and have it start fast and ease out just like so. Exit the graph editor and shift the layers word by word a few frames each. 
This is the whole point in splitting up the words to add another layer of depth into our animation. Finally, we can unsolo our text and see how it looks in our composition. Tweak the timing of the keyframes for both the text and blur map until you get something you like. Remember how I promised we'd come back to displacement later? Well, later is now. And it's a bit complex, but stick with me here. Right click and make a new solid. Let's name this Fractal Noise. This might come as a bit of a surprise to you, but I'm actually gonna add the effect Fractal Noise to this layer. The specific Fractal Noise settings kinda don't matter since there's so many variations that look good with this setup, but I'm gonna use Dynamic and increase the contrast. For mine, I'm also going to increase the scale under the Transform dropdown. Let's also add a really simple expression to the evolution. Alter option, click the stopwatch next to evolution and type time times 100. This is great automated motion, but we don't need any of this detail. So add a fast box blur effect and blur the shit out of it. What? We're keeping this family friendly? Add a fast box blur effect and blur it a good amount. All right, this is where things get a little complicated. Add the calculations effect. Under the second source layer, choose the blur map and make sure effects and masks is selected. Then increase the opacity to 100% and set the blending mode to multiply. Whatever our blur map does is combined on top of our fractal noise on one layer. Lastly on this layer, add a tint effect and set the black option to 50% brightness. The reason we're doing this is because displacement maps use 50% gray as neutral. Anything darker or lighter than 50% gray push the pixels in the scene in opposite directions. In other words, 50% gray means no distortion. It's easier to just show this because we're done with this layer. Toggle it off and drag it to the bottom of the stack since we don't need to see it. On our blur and displacement adjustment layer, add a displacement map effect. Select the fractal noise layer, and once again, make sure to change this dropdown to effects and masks. Change both the horizontal and vertical displacements to luminance and crank the number way up. I went with 100, 100 for this, but mess around with it. Duplicate the displacement map effect and add a negative sign before each number. This will help recenter our canvas since the first effect alone pushed it in one direction. Our effect is basically done, but before we move on to stylizing it, I do want to point out that you can take off the tint effect and mess around with all the settings on the fractal noise layer for entirely different looks. For example, look what happens when we take off the tint and fast box blur. Pretty sick, right? Anyway, there's only a few effects left. Make a new adjustment layer and name it Glow. Personally, I use Optical Glow from Red Giant, but a cheaper alternative is Deep Glow, and you can always stack multiple default After Effects glows for a somewhat similar effect. Regardless, Glow isn't a necessary effect for this, so feel free to skip this step. Next, let's make a really simple Speckles effect. Make a new solid and name it Speckles, and place it below the Glow layer. Add a trusty old Fractal Noise onto the layer and crank up the contrast ridiculously high. Do the same with the brightness, but in the opposite direction into the negatives. Under Evolution Options, Alter Option, click the stopwatch next to Random Seed and type Time times however many times you want the pattern to change per second. Personally, I like four for this. Experiment with the contrast, brightness, and fractal noise scale to get an amount and size of the speckles that you like. Lastly, set the layer's blending mode to Screen. Our last adjustment layer is for final stylizing, so let's name it as such. Add a transform effect and set the scale to 101, and then add a keyframe to the first frame of the composition. Move forward to the end of the composition and increase the amount to something like 110. The reason we set it to 101 is because we're gonna add a simple jitter expression to the position. If you don't, you'll see some problems on the edges of the composition. Hold down Alter Option and click the stopwatch on the Transform Effects position. Type Posterize Time with something like four, five, or six, and then a semicolon to end the line. Bump down to the next line and add a wiggle expression with a very fast frequency and a small amplitude. Something like 200, three works really well. Click away and you should see that we now have an automated jitter with a scale in over the course of our animation. Lastly for this layer, add a posterized time effect and set it to whatever you like. I think one third of the composition's frame rate looks good, but you could do 12, eight, six, or whatever you like. And boom, that's it. If you learned something from this video, let me know by dropping a like and subscribe if you wanna see more from me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.